I'm Pam Shockley Zalabak, Chancellor of the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. It's really my pleasure to invite you to watch and listen to a presentation about how UCCS really is a university built by a community. On this first slide, you are seeing the earliest picture of the Cragmore campus of the University of Colorado, at least the earliest one that we can find. So it has to be 1965. There's a story about how UCCS came to be that is a fact, but it's also something that's very important. You see in this picture that was taken in the early 1990s with David Packard and Bill Hewlett with some of our engineering faculty. But the story that is so important, and it's kind of in the DNA of UCCS, begins when we find that a man named Dave Packard, Pueblo native, high school graduate of Pueblo, he and Bill Hewlett had become highly successful in what is now Silicon Valley, it certainly wasn't Silicon Valley then, in California, came to the governor, Governor Love of Colorado, and to leaders in Colorado Springs and said, we will bring Hewlett Packard robustly to Colorado. There was a small facility in Loveland at that time. But we will do this only if there is a University of Colorado campus featuring business and engineering that can be in Colorado Springs. Dave Packard wanted to have part of his company in commuting distance of his native Pueblo. Pueblo was not chosen because of air and rail needs of what was then a manufacturing business. So we were founded in a way that probably could not happen today in 90 days in order to attract Hewlett Packard very robustly to the state of Colorado. So the beginning was 1965. You're seeing an aerial view of what was the beginning. A man named George J. Dwyer was in fact the trustee for the bankrupt Craigmore Sanatorium, a bankrupt tuberculosis sanatorium. So in what is the best deal in I think, in recorded Colorado history for a land transaction because you cannot gift a bankruptcy property. This 80 acres that you're seeing the aerial view of that became the first part of the campus was sold to the University of Colorado Regents for a whopping one dollar. So this is kind of the location North Nevada Avenue, Austin Bluffs, Union Boulevard. This is the Cragmore Sanitarium, 1965, the first acreage. Now, it stayed that way for a long time, but in 1979, and the next walk through memory lane, so to speak, is going to be 1979 to 1999, you're going to see a fabulous visionary, Dr. Virginia Trimbley, gift over 300 acres to the university. And her vision, Dr. Trimbley's vision, was to have a robust educational enterprise that would serve the entire region, but that it would focus on health and wellness and sports and the arts the very kinds of things that we are planning to put on the Trembley property, and I'll talk about that in a little while. But all of a sudden, this gift was larger than the entire beginning 80 acres. Then in 1996, Dot Heller gifted the Heller property, which is an arts and cultural center. She and, of course, Dr. Virginia Trembley Dr. Trembley being the first female dentist in Colorado Springs, were in fact colleagues and friends. And she saw the beginning of the importance of the campus. Next came the Wilman Life Estate in 1998. The Riley property in 1998. And then Classic Homes in 1998 actually wanted to put a sewer line through our property 
And so we, in fact, um, negotiated with them that they would give us the backing of our bluffs if they could put a sewer line through our property. So we acquired that property in 1998. Then the 21st century begins. What we call the North Railroad Parcel in 2001. Uh, a gift, but trying to knit it together with our other property along Nevada. Compassion International Building was acquired to put the Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences that was currently at that point in trailers into a facility that could become their new home. There were seven community partners who participated in this. The former TRW building, now Freedom Financial Services Expo Center, became part of the campus, although not adjacent, in 2006. University Summit, the former Shuck property, 2007. CU Foundation, instrumental in helping us in many of these properties. The Fuller property, in 2011. And Naomi Kuhlman, dear friend of the campus, when she passed away, gifted us her property in 2012. So what you see is a university built by a community. Because in fact, only 14 acres of this 540 contiguous acres was ever purchased by the Regents or by the state of Colorado. So today you see the Heller Center for the Arts and Humanities, the Four Diamonds Complex, the site for the Lane Center for Academic Health Sciences, our Family Development Center, the TRW Freedom Financial Services Expo Center, the main campus, and University Hall. But the people have really been extraordinarily important, and that's community as well. El Pomar Foundation, Jim and Karen Passell, Bruce and Ann Shepard. Without their commitment over many years, none of this would have been possible. Jim Gallagher, Ed and Mary Osborne, the Hildebrands, Tom Saponis, all extraordinarily connected to their alma maters, or not their alma maters, but believing that the community, in fact, needs to move forward with a fine university. Eva Monette, Dorothy and Sandy Kramer, Clancy and Linda Herbst, and of course, the wonderful foundations like El Pomar, but also the Daniels Fund. Kaiser Permanente, the Kane Family Foundation, Ant, Atmel. Anthony Kisley, Kathy Lou and her family, Barb Al Steiner, Carolyn and Bruce Copper. The Anschutz Family Foundation, Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group the Reicher Family Foundation, and in honor of Martin and Barbara Hahn. We've also had wonderful anonymous donors. In fact, $5.5 million from an anonymous donor to really work on accessibility for students for UCCS. And you see this wonderful picture of the newly completed guest house, the Heller Center, that in fact was the result of an anonymous donation. So what's the future? What are we thinking about as we move toward 2020? Well, we're staying in some ways in the traditions of the past. Student focus, integration, innovation, collaboration, inclusive diversity, dynamic responsible growth, and integrity. So what are our strategic goals? Well, over our next planning period, which ends in 2020, the Regents have just adopted this, we expect to add seven new baccalaureate programs, four masters, one doctoral program, and to put 12 additional full degree programs online. We really are increasing our funded research and scholarship in all of our colleges, as well as our investments in cutting edge technology. We want to continue to be there for our students. I think one of the hallmarks of UCCS over many years has been to focus on the student experience. And our students are achieving extraordinarily well. We 
teach well, but we work well with our students and care about them as individuals, even as we grow. We do need to increase our international and multicultural program opportunities. We live in a global world, so we have established an Office of International Programs and Services. We are going to expand study abroad opportunities, as well as increase our on-campus population of international students. We want to make sure that we stay as an engaged community as we grow. So we are going to continue to foster an open environment based on mutual respect, both in the classroom and in all other activities of the university. We want to really build that inclusive educational community. We will increase our diverse populations because certainly we know that the diversity of our region is increasing and we want students and families from all walks of life and all types of diversity reflected in what we do. We are going to continue to inspire sustainability. Our buildings are LEED certified, but importantly we are also going to provide the educational information that students need to live in an environment which fosters really responsible environmental stewardship as well as responsible stewardship of our financial resources so that as public monies decline for public higher education we can sustain excellence which we owe our publics even in troubled or difficult financial times. We're going to build responsible enrollment growth. We're going to grow over these next few years to 13,000 undergraduates and to 2,600 graduate students. And our online numbers will be on top of that. So we believe probably by 2020 we will be, in terms of different students, exceeding 20,000 people that we will serve on an annual basis. We do have to continue to focus on revenues. We're going to expand our business enterprise activities. We're going to increase, and, and we need people to help us with this, not only stewardship of our financial responsibilities, but philanthropy as it comes into this institution. But always we want to assure you that we're working to be efficient, effective, but also excellent. And that means very tight management of revenues and expenses. Our infrastructure will grow. We're going to be opening our first building uh, in just a little over a year and a half on North Nevada, the Lane Center for Academic Health Sciences. We want to open a visual and performing arts complex on North Nevada, as well as have a one-of-a-kind in the world high altitude track and soccer stadium that we hope will also be available for wounded warriors as well as Paralympians. We will increasingly work not only with the CU system but in state collaborations. We've been very involved with the Southern Colorado Higher Education Consortium which is a consortium of five community colleges and five four-year institutions, and us included in the five, as the only research institution in that group. We want more young people in southern Colorado to know that they have an opportunity to go to school. Our post-secondary participation rates are not equivalent to the northern part of the state, and we need to work on that. But we also want to continue to work collaboratively with the CU system and work in every way with our community. We are going to, in fact, do more in-house in terms of communicating with you and with our various publics. We are going to spend more time with our alumni, but in ways that make it easy for you to connect to us and do not always demand, although we always welcome you on campus, but would not demand an on-campus presence. We're going to be accountable. We are going to foster excellence by looking continuously at our student entrance qualifications. We're going to look at our retention and graduation rates and our research productivity. 
We're going to look in the innovation area, research grants, inventions and discoveries, tech transfer, increased use of high impact practices in the classroom. We're going to look at our impact. Have we grown? Do we have more extended studies offering? And are we establishing the wellness programs that we believe are the hallmark of this campus? So what's our vision with regard to facilities? You see us here um, turning dirt for our housing expansion, which is underway right now because we have completely run out of room. But you also see Margot Lane, one of our alums, who named the Lane Center for Academic Health Sciences. And you see a schematic drawing. You see Margot with her family members and her son, Phil. But it's also her um, daughter-in-law, who is Dr. Anita Lane, one of the physicians in our community, and her granddaughter. You see the vision for the National Sport Arts and Wellness Village that will be along North Nevada. And it's really a university, regional, national partnership. What you're going to see, and this is the North Nevada corridor that you're looking at, you see our points of reference, Pulpit Rock, North Nevada Avenue, University Village, Colorado, uh, a shopping center, and the U of a Rock neighborhood. That's the point of reference of this national village. But on the southern parcel, the Lane Academic Center for Academic Health Sciences uh, will be the first building, and it's coming out of the ground this fall. This building will have Peak Vista Senior Community Health Clinic, CU Center of Aging, UCCS Gerontology Center, and the Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences. We will have a truly interprofessional model of caring for families. The central parcel, 300,000 gross square feet state-of-the-art performing and visual arts center, and we hope to be partnering with the community, whether it's the Philharmonic, the Conservatory, or other community arts programs. The northern part of the parcel is that high altitude track and soccer field that I spoke about a few moments ago, a field house and an arena. So this concept really focuses on three primary areas, and it's the future. Sports, health, wellness, and the arts. Community partners, but also national partners, whether it be the United States Olympic Committee, U.S. Northern Command, our military installations, a variety of other partnerships. So really, it is the commitment of people to UCCS, certainly the faculty, certainly the staff, but the students over time that create the future. Margaret Peg Bacon, our provost, retired at the end of June. But I want you to hear about a student and Clancy Herbst, who, when he heard Terry Garrett speak, established a scholarship. Terry just did graduate. I will become the first blind person in space. He's the kind of role model uh, our young people in this country need. Lots of them need somebody like Terry. If I go back to when I first met Clancy, I, um, he just had this confidence about him that, uh, and this heart that it just showed in his handshake and showed through his voice. The person who is willing to put me through my college degree so I'll have no uh, debt, debt after, after I graduate, I graduate mm -hmm. is a is very, very big thing. thing. He deserves a lot of honor, and I just, I just want to make sure that, that I show him respect for what he has done for me. For me. He, says, he says, I, I am so, so, so old, old, but I still, but I still ride, ride my mountain, mountain bike. bike. That's, <laughs> That's impressive, impressive to me, and I want to be able to do that when I get that age. Terry just impressed me, and I said, you got to do something about this, and I did something about this. I would, I would say, say that, that is totally, totally a relationship, relationship of respect and admiration. So, so since, since I can't, I can't see, see the computer, computer screen, screen, I have, I have a, program a program on here. here. 
which is called um, JAWS for Windows. It's a screen reading software that is for the PC uh, Windows platform. And basically what it does is it takes any text on the screen and converts it into synthesized speech that I can hear through my speakers. And it's basically just so I can read documents, I can read, I can use the internet, I can do email, I can do my programming from my microcontrollers on here. And this is a program that I use every single day. Now it's probably way too fast for people to understand. He said, um, document WordPad, document WordPad, rich text, rich text edit. I had a job in a factory one during, during the summers, summers and Christmas, Christmas holidays through school, but I had eyesight, and uh, so for Terry to get done in what six years you said? Six years. Uh, that's pretty darn good. Terry's future is in front of him, and who knows where he's going to go besides space. Terry, by the way, is just now going to work for Northrop Grumman. I hope you've enjoyed this brief history lesson about a university built by a community, but also our commitment to the future. It's an exciting time to be a part of the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, but that has perhaps always been true. Thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation.